Hello, I'm Doug Musio. This is City Talk. He was a small-time hood from Red Hook with big dreams. He inspired Bob Dylan, Mario Puzo, and Jimmy Breslin. He bebopped with the beats in the village, quoted Camus, Nietzsche, and gunned down Albert Anastasia in a barbershop, and was executed over a bowl of spaghetti in Umberto's clam house. He's Crazy Joe Gallo, and he's the subject of The Mad Ones, Crazy Joe Gallo and the Edge of the Underworld, written by Tom Folsom. Tom is a writer, director, and producer of TV documentaries for an A&E and Showtime. His previous book was Mr. Untouchable, The Rise, Fall, and Resurrection of Heroine's Teflon Don, written with the subject of the book, the notorious Harlem drug kingpin, Nicky Barnes. Welcome. Thank you, Doug. Thanks Two for having me. great books. I, I, I spent a whole weekend just reading these books. Why, why these gangsters? Why these amoral anti-hero criminals? <laughs> what is it? People. Well, the bad guys are always more fun to write about sometimes. Uh, you know, these, these stories really provide uh, a window into really particular times in New York City history. Sure. Uh, so for me, uh, it's not only just a great gangster tale, uh, it's an opportunity, uh, you know, to see, you know, what life is like in Greenwich Village in the 1950s, uh, you know, what's high society doing uh, on the Upper East Side in the early 1970s. So these really landmark eras, uh, I feel that uh, the, the gangster story is a, is a great vehicle through, through these, you know, Oh, absolutely. Eras. I mean, it really is much more a cultural history, if you will, than a gangster tale. But at, 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 at its root, it's a gangster tale. Sure. And what was striking, particularly about the Medwins, which I, I read first, even though it is the, the later book, it's really very novelistic and cinematic. You, you have these real quick cutting scenes and like a la Pulp Fiction, you've got <laughs> some things out of sequence. It was, did you write Write it as a proto screenplay. Did you think cinematically? Well, for me, you know, the Gallows—they uh, not only inspired film; they were also inspired by film. I mean, Joey is a guy who's you know he's watching Richard Richard Winmark and Kiss of Death. I know. I, I had to watch the movie. I mean, the guy Tommy Udo is really psycho. Yeah. No, he's a. I mean, and you know, you think Joey is a young guy, young up and cut, uh, young young up and cut, coming hoodlum, and. You know, he needs a he needs an M.O. He needs a, a personality. So I think he's seeing Richard Widmark you know, up there on screen. He's carrying the pants off the audience. Right. Like he's tying an old lady to a wheelchair oh, right. and dumping her down the right. steps. Yes. Uh, so, you know, to me, I'm thinking Joey's thinking, that's it. You know, I'm a you know, I'm a skinny guy. I got blonde hair. I don't look ferocious, but I do this uh, this, this this crazy persona. And, uh, you know, I think that you know, he, he cultivated this, uh, you know, crazy Joe Gallo, uh, you, you know, from Joe the Blonde to Crazy Joe. Now, how does he become, how does he become Crazy Joe? Well, uh, the, it came after uh, Joey went in front of the McClellan Committee. Uh, now, and a famous confrontation with Bobby Kennedy. Right. Uh, you know, Bobby Kennedy, uh, kind of before the big show, Bobby invites Joey into his office. And, uh, you know, Bobby, you know, he's equally you know, fascinated and repelled by gangsters. Uh, you know, Bobby knows all the nicknames. He's always like, yeah, no, this guy's Joe the Blonde. You know, he, he uh, you know, maybe it's because they're, you know, both of their fathers were bootleggers. Well, wait, wait, we got to go back and talk a little bit about the Kennys, both with Gallo right, and sure. with Bonds, but go yeah. ahead. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, so, you know, Joey comes in uh, into Kennedy's office, and Kennedy says he's dressed like a Hollywood gangster, grade B. Kenny's kind of eating this up, I think. So, uh, you know, Joey, he, he's, he's got his black shades, his, uh, his Tommy Udo outfit, you know, black, uh, black suit, black shirt. He's got his pinky ring. You know, he kneels on the floor and, and, he, and he feels the rug and he says, yeah, this would be a great carpet for a crap game, kid. So, you know, this is, uh, this is Joey's, you know, introduction to Robert Kennedy. Uh, so, you know, of course, they're in front of the McClellan Committee, Joey and his brother Larry, right. uh, to answer for impropriety in the jukebox industry. Uh, oh, but, that, I mean, that, we can't even get into that, but the whole sure. fascinating low-level crime and how they yeah. produce massive amounts of wealth, loan sharking, gambling, jukebox, all of that stuff. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. 
Well, uh, you know, they, uh, you know, this is this is their national television debut. You know, the, the cameras are rolling here, and here comes, you know, again, these these guys look like Hollywood gangsters. I mean, Larry, Joey's older brother, is dressed like you know one of the Reservoir Dogs. You know, down, you know, he's got the skinny white tie, or the skinny black tie, you know, white shirt, black suit. Uh, so they're, you know, they're they're pleading the fifth, and they're smoking cigarettes the whole time. They're knocking ashtrays on the floor. They they really get under the senator's, you know, skin here. So after this this television debut, uh, you know, Kennedy, you know, he kind of wants to see, you know, the, put the squeeze on Joey here, and uh, you know, for for such a for kind of a nobody in the underworld at the time, you know, there's an inordinate amount of attention, you know, put on Joey, and he loves it. Yeah. He, he loves, loves it. it. This is his validation, the fact that he's gotten to go, you know, mano a mano with Kennedy. Here. Right. And, and, it, and, it, and it feeds his dreams. Go no, ahead. No, for go sure. Ahead. It's his chance to play Tommy Udo right. you know, in front of the camera. Right. And so, I remember watching, this will tell you how old right. I am, watching it as a kid. It was televised, those, those committee hearings. Go ahead. Joey gets thrown in uh, into Kings County, uh, you know, the psych ward for uh, you know to keep him off the streets for a while. Uh, this is uh, you know right after he's he's gone in front of the McClellan committee, uh, and, and they say that he's a you know he's paranoid schizophrenic. Uh, so as a result, this comes out in the papers and people start to talk about you know, the name Crazy Joe. Uh, so that's how you get the the the. And it works to his advantage because being right. slightly crazy in the criminal underworld is a plus. Listen, when this guy comes into your bar or your luncheonette. You've got a jukebox there, and you know maybe uh, you know what I, I, this is a seamy business, the jukebox business. I want to get this jukebox out of here. You know, well, crazy J crazy Joe pays you a visit. He looks just like Tommy Udo. You know, you've seen that movie. You know, it's 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 unnerving. And you know, he comes in, he's he's kind of looking at you. He's or, you know Joey Howard. He was a really twitchy guy, uh, and he, he's just he kind of loose, but he, he's he's got these these steel eyes that just bore into you, and you don't know what he's going to do next. So yeah, and he, 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 crazy Joe certainly didn't hurt. The, the business. Okay, and and but they're not necess They're not very successful gangsters. I mean, they've got their own turf, but then they try to go big time and they get involved in this profaci war where they get decimated. Uh, absolutely over their heads. Totally. Well, so you know why why do they do it? You know, I, I think that the uh, you know how do you, the Gallo gang is basically you know about twenty five strong. Right. You know, uh, it's, it's got a lion, it's got a dwarf, Mondo the midget. It's right. almost like the you know the cast of a Fellini film here. It is. So. Uh, you know why would these 25 guys hole up in a Red Hook tenement, uh, their grandmother's, the Gallo grandmother's tenement, right. uh, with well, shotguns? Yeah, sure. Right. Well, with shotguns and bombs, and you know, and you know, 25 of us are going to you know hole up Alamo style here uh, and wage guerrilla war against the Perfacci family, which is 200 strong. Uh, so you know, why were they going to do it? And, and to me, I think the answer is uh, it's it's. Partly in, in terms of uh, Joey going to Greenwich Village, you know he's moving to Greenwich Village uh, in the early '60s at the same time Bob Dylan is. Now it hasn't uh, it exploded in uh, say you know the kind of revolutionary radical fervor that that led to things like the Weatherman bombing. Right. Uh, so, but this is still this is still you know. The shift from early beat, from from kind of late beatnik to, to early early radicalism right. here, uh, and and, and, and but there is in the village, yeah, and and but there's and the music, no, sure, yeah, and it's not just you know that Joey uh, these latent instincts in him uh, in him, you know, he wants to all of a sudden create, he wants to to write, to paint, uh, and he does, and he does, and he's you know, it's not bad. It's not bad. You know what? His stuff almost looks like he's, he's, he really does kind of a Van Gogh thing. He's right. He's no, no, right. And exactly. And some of his writing isn't bad. No. And he reads Nietzsche and Camus. And he, I mean, this is, this ain't your regular hood. No, certainly not. He's, uh, he's extraordinarily well read. Now, this doesn't make him a good guy. No, 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 no. Uh, no, say, he's a know, thug. I yeah, mean, no, 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 for sure. Uh, no, but he's, uh, Listen, he's his his prison reading list is is like a great book syllabus. Right, it's a and master's he even goes degree. down to to Sun Tzu and, and Plato here. I mean, he's a fan of Machiavelli, and he, and he practices Machiavellian politics. Sending him to prison wasn't necessarily a good idea. <laughs> no, you know, it seems like these guys, you know, even Nicky Barnes, who Joey met in prison, uh, Nicky Barnes, the the Harlem heroin dealer. Uh, Mr. Yeah, Untouchable. Yeah, this is prison's a great. It's like a, you know, for for up and coming hoods, it's 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 a you know, it's a college for for the season. Once it's a chance to make alliances. It's, it's it's really quite incredible, and particularly having read the Mad Ones first, and then saying, oh, "Wow, I got to read this." Yeah. And then reading the Untouchables, you can see that this book really leads to that one. Let's 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 go away from Joey for a second. Yeah, sure. How did you get to write, or co-write with Nikki Barnes his 
unauthorized biography. I mean, Nicky Bond. Yeah, no, it was uh, the first time I saw Nicky. It was. It, it, it takes a while to, to, well, to make you, that how did, transition. How did, you, what, how did this start? Well, it's a it's it's a bit of a complicated story, okay. but uh, but to I, get it to make it simple. Yeah. Uh, so you know, let's just say that you know I, I went under to into witness protection and and was able to uh, do this thing with Nikki Barnes, right? And uh, and and collaborate on on his book. Uh, and it's, and how did you do how did you do the book? Explain to me what what it took to produce this volume. Uh, I spent a lot of time with Nikki. Uh, just in just this a sense undisclosed of get, location. Absolutely, and just you know, not only you know, I was well versed in the story before I'd ever met him, uh, having done a lot of research before. Of sure. course, you know, he was a he kind of like Joey. He was he was in the tabloids of his time. You know, Nikki Barnes was on the cover of the New York Times uh, magazine, magazine in a in a in a suit. Right. And, you know, right. Jimmy Carter. I remember get, this. Yeah. I know. I yeah. know. So uh, and they couldn't get him. Yeah, no, they couldn't. Um, well, Mr. Untouchable, that was. Uh, they but they got him. him. They got him. And they you got know, him big after, time. Yeah, uh, you, you don't you don't get on the cover of New York so, Times. So okay, magazine. so how do you so you meet this guy and what? Right. Well, uh, you know, it's it's with, with Nikki. It was I was I got a chance to get the tone of how one of these larger than life gangsters speak act. You know, kind of how they think. You know, I saw a lot of parallels between Nikki Barnes and Joey Gallo. Mm -hmm. uh, the foremost being is that they took uh, the spirit, the respective spirits of their time. You know, Nikki Barnes, he, he took the tenets of black mm -hmm. nationalism, uh, which, which, uh, and he twisted it to his own criminal ends in order to create, you know, a, a black mafia. They understood, if you will, the zeitgeist. No, for sure. And and Joey, uh, kind of getting back to what we were talking about earlier, is. Uh, he's, he's taking what he's learning in Greenwich Village, and it start, he starts to mutate this, this innocent spirit that's celebrated by the Beats. Uh, you know, that started off as just like, well, we're not going to, you know, be a part of the Eisenhower establishment. Mm -hmm. We're going to forge our own way, and we're going to create. You know, we're going to create art. Jack Kerouac. You know, we're going to sure. We're and gonna, we're going to talk re about reinvent. Uh, you know, how prose is. So I mean, it's, th these little revolutions begin. It's a revolution in prose. It's a revolution, a, a cultural revolution right. in the '60s, and this starts to turn militant in the course of the de over the course of the decade. Right. Uh, Joey picks up on that vibe very early. He's uh, he he takes what he's learning and he says, "Well, I, yeah, people think I'm I might be a, this this anti-hero gangster you know, who's fr free from the shackles of society, but he's actually in the establishment, and the establishment is the mafia." And for Joey, ah, oh, wait a second. So this explains the Profaci War because right. he's, he sees himself as a revolutionary. I mean, we've got Castro, yeah. we've got all of this stuff going. Ah, so you know, he's a romantic you... revolutionary. He's the Che of Red Hook. I mean, what's the <laughs> that's, story? It, that's absolutely right. He's the Che of Red Hook. You know, Joey said, if I'd been born in another time, they would have put my statue up in the streets. You know, I, I can imagine that Joey's hanging out in Washington Square Park, you know, looking at the statue of Garibaldi and thinking, okay, that's I get me. it. That's a good. Okay. So you know, he did really think of himself as as you know one of the great revolutionaries you know he'd be in, in when he was in prison he'd be holding little, you know Mao's little red book and you know talking about you know so the there's system. an element of real thirst of knowledge and an element of being caught in this 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 fad if you will you right know, serious and there's a little bit of pretentiousness to this too no walking around with Mao's little red book isn't oh, of course just and a little bit no of course and this is you know it, it, this is something that we'll see later in you know in the days of radical chic uh, when Joey gets back out of prison Right. In the early 70s. Right. That, yeah. And then, you know, you, you go to Tom Wolfe's Radical Chic, chic but you had Gangster Chic. I mean, your book, and then it forced me to go back and look at old oh, Life magazines, <laughs> that they were in the headlines a lot. They were in, sure. you know, major cover stories in, 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 in Life magazine, covered by the Post. Covered by the, the Times, <laughs> covered by the news. Yeah. This was big stuff. Sure. And, you know, you think about, okay, well, the the really successful gangsters, the, you know, the Carlo Gambinos of the world, uh, the, the Joseph Profacis, they shun publicity. Oh, yeah, that's, like, the last that's thing from that the want. light. Right, exactly. So, meanwhile, you have the Gallo Gang here on President Street at the, in their grandmother's tenement, and, and they're inviting the photographers from Life magazine oh, right. to come. And posing. And do a photo spread. And, right. oh, of course, well, why Excuse not? Excuse me. You know? But it <laughs> so, says something about the society yeah. that is interested and, in a sense, glorifies that. I mean, you saw it with, even with the Gaudis most recently, sure. sort of the, you know, the the building up of the Gaudis to be something. Yeah. I don't know quite what it is. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I think, you know, uh, exactly as you said, uh, 
this gangster chic comes about, uh, you know, especially in the after the release of the Godfather movie, right? And which, and, and clearly, as you point out, and I hadn't realized it, obviously, is that he was the 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 model for Jimmy Breslin's absolutely great, uh, sure, um, knockout know, book, oh, knockout book, and ten two, and I didn't realize that it was the gallows that couldn't shoot straight. But in your book, there's a whole several pages where they're blowing up people and missing and throwing hand grenades that bounce off glasses. I mean. I mean, it really is Kid Sally Palumbo. Yeah, there's a lot of that, the, a comic element, you know, when you've got, you know, a, 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 almost the absurdity of this gang war that they're that they're deciding to fight. Uh, and Jimmy, he picked up on that and, and he forged, forged a comedy out of it. But what, but you, what you point out is that Jerry Orbeck, who pe played Kid Sally in the movie, yeah. actually befriended Gallo and gave him entree to, if you will, high society. Well, Joey uh, told his parole officer, and parole's like, well, what are you going to do? And Joey said, well, you know, I think I'm going to go into show business and make some real money. Funny enough, Joey was on the way to doing that before he got whacked at Umberto's Clam House. He got a book deal in the weeks, you know, after, you know, before, right. before his death. Right. And you know, how does a guy like, you know, how does a small time thug get into be being a cultural icon and get a book deal? Well, I mean, he means all these people. And sure. then they and, love and, and, him. And, and just Pete Hamill the writes the pieces on him. Come on. And then Gay Talese, I mean, yeah, well, I mean, this is, again, right after The Godfather a... comes out, you've got, you know, you see this film, the, the Corleone boys, they look like, they look like nice guys, you know, right. just, a, right. they're, they're, they're living right. the American right. dreams on the only right. terms that right. America's letting right. them. So, uh, there's this really, have, this, yeah. this, this, this amber glow almost that, you know, people So, wait are, a second, I mean, are they meant to be... Is there a correlation? I don't even know. I guess between Sonny and uh, well, Joey, I and think the, Michael and Larry, but Kid Blast. I don't know. Well, certainly. Uh, I mean, it composites and trying to trace sure. it back to. Well, uh, certainly Puzo drew, Puzo drew from the Gallo tale in in writing the Godfather. Sure. Sure. Uh, going to the mattresses, sleeps with fishes. Oh yeah, wait, wait, do do going to the mattresses and sleep with fishes. I I, I I'm an etymologist. I love the yeah, derivation. No, of these yeah, no, yeah. Well, they seem. Do you know, do it sleeping with the fishes. Sleeps with the fishes. Fishes in the movie. It's yeah, it's a Sicilian tradition. You know, sleeps with the fishes. Well, is it really a Sicilian tradition? I, I think what you know. I'm Sicilian. Gallo, and we don't have that tradition. You know, I, this is something that was created out of this 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 wild Gallo tale from this wild Gallo tale. Uh, it was uh, the Gallos had a diner uh, in Flatbush called Jackie's, and uh, you know, right at the uh, at the cusp of the the Gallo Profaci War, uh, the Gallo bodyguard, a guy named Joe Jelly, known as the you know the the, the, the toughest man in South Brooklyn, you know, the most feared gun. He's, uh, you know, we find his uh, his clothes uh, wrapped around a dead fish, and this package is thrown by a mysterious, you know, out of a mysterious car in front of the Gallo family diner. Uh, Joe Jelly sleeps with the fishes. Okay. Uh, you know, and it, it's just great to see the FB, FBI reports on this. It's oh, like, so you had access to that sure. as well? No, 1,500 pages on Joey, 1,500 pa pages on Larry. Uh, so there's this, it's this treasure trove of information. Oh, no, when to see part of part of when I read it, I said, "How does this guy know this stuff?" Okay. Yeah, it's it's uh, you know I would say not just from from wiretaps, which is you know provides some of the incredible dialogue, incredible dialogue that you can never make up. Right. Uh, you're getting a day by day account of what's going on in the Gala War uh, by FBI agents who are on the scene every day. Now. Uh, you see these daily reports that are going to Hoover, and there's things like, uh, well, you know, talk to, you know, because when, when, when the FBI was working there every day, you know, you establish a bit of a rapport with the gallows. And the this is something... They to eat together. Yeah, no, they, they would actually have meals together inside... <laughs> really? Uh, inside gallow headquarters. That, that You know, Umberto the Father would cook these big pots of spaghetti, and they'd all sit down. You know, it's very much kind of godfather here. But, you know, the FBI's got a job to right. do, and they're, right. they're consciously forging relationships... Uh, with some of these guys that you know in the Gallo gang, which is you know the very bottom of this of this, you know of the Cosa Nostra, right. and uh, information starts to trickle up uh, in the course of, of them talking to the Gallos. You know the Gallos weren't squealers, but you know you're in a conversation. You might slip a word sure. like capo. Sure. All of a sudden, it's what's a capo? We don't know what a capo right. is. This is going directly to Hoover. Uh, one report I read it says like you know we heard about uh, the, the Causa Nostra. They even misspell it. C A U S A. Uh, so you know, that was the first mention I'd ever seen of, of wow. that term in wow. any files. So uh, I think the the uh, on that block of President Street, uh, which is Gallo headquarters right. uh, on the Red Hook waterfront, right. I, I would say the FBI gained a, 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 a more complete portrait of what the Cosa Nostra right. was that had been previously available. Sure. Now, 
you should do walking tours. I have. I do walking tours. Uh, we did that as part of a. Wait a minute. Yeah. You did a walking tour of this. I was sure. This neighborhood was perfect. Sure. On uh, well, this was uh, this was uh, Joey Gala you... month in uh, in Red Hook. Uh, this last, month last is Joey. This was May uh, upon the release it was of the Joey book. Gala, Joey month? Gala month. Oh yeah, uh, I was right. Uh, I don't know. So, that says something. Uh, that uh, that was sponsored by a local bookstore there, and oh, okay. so as a result of that, I uh, I did I did walking tours uh, of the neighborhood, and it was it was really uh, incredible to see a lot of the younger people uh, who just you know, moved in the neighborhood. I mean, Red Hook is now you know it's a hip place to Excuse live. Excuse me. So they they very much wanted to know you know what the story was about. Uh -huh. you know, maybe they'd heard it from the Bob Dylan song. Maybe they you know picked up on it you know just from the Godfather. Uh, but you know the crowds have been really receptive just to knowing uh, not just about you know the Gallo Gang, but about you know just the history of that of that neighborhood. Okay, and then but then you almost have to do a village tour. You know the second right. piece of that sure. tour. Talk about the Dylan thing. I mean, Dylan yeah. writes an eleven minute. minute ballad called Joey, and I've you know I yeah. downloaded it, and I've got the. It was really a pay on to Joey Gallo. Yeah. Well, this is not just, uh, I mean, this is an 11 minute, he's mourning. Yes. Why do they have to come and blow you away? Right. This is a really heartfelt song. So why does, uh, you know, Bob Dylan write about a guy like Joey Gallo? Right. Uh, I mean, that's a good question. You know, Dylan says, uh, you know, I never thought of him as a gangster. I always thought of him as some kind of hero in some kind of way. Uh, a, re a revolutionary? Uh, who knows? You know, I think you I probably mean, like saw Joey. And, and is, is there a similarity in his treatment? Well, of I, I think it was more like a, almost like a, a legendary ballad of a, okay. of a, of a okay. Jesse James. Type. Okay, okay. Uh, for me, Makes I sense. think that's how Dylan okay. was trying to okay. you know, take this. That's the direction he was going. I think in the Crazy mm -hmm. Joe story mm -hmm. in the song. Uh, one of the play. I mean, you mentioned places, and you're talking sure. about a tour. One of the places in my life that I that I rue is no longer there was the Eighth Street Bookshop. Oh. The best. Yeah. I was I was graduate student at NYU, and yeah. I was there all the time. I wish I'd seen it. Oh man, it was fabulous. And when when you when you wrote about Joey Gallo pulling his you know his his prison reading list out of the HB yeah. bookstore, it was really yeah. He remarkable. told he told the the poet clerk uh, that worked there that was uh, he was like, yeah I read a lot of Camus. <laughs> right. Excuse me. Yeah. Now. Look at these two men. Sure. And you've actually dealt with the living version of yeah. this guy and the and much of the when he was alive version of this guy. Yeah. They're both. They're both incredibly charismatic. You can't deny that. Very right. intelligent, and uh, they did some really bold things in their respective arenas of crime. And, and they are <laughs> they're sociopaths. Right, they're, they're disgusting people. Yeah. They're, 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 yeah, these are not people to be emula emulated. No, not in any way, except they had their own particular geniuses. Sure. Certainly, Nikki Barnes is an organizational genius. I mean, right. if you look at organizational structure, values, norms, standard operating procedures, I mean, you could write a text from my leadership and strategy class from this guy. Well, you know where Nikki learned it? Joey Gallo. Joey Gallo was teaching Nikki Barnes uh, the organization well, of a mafia family while they were in Green, Green Haven okay. prison. Okay. Uh, you know, so you got to keep these guys away from one another. Right. This is this is not good. You know, Joey's. I mean, Nikki's taking what he's learning from Joey, and you know, it's just it just so happens that the structure of a mafia family is the perfect pyramid for distributing heroin. <laughs> this is something that Lucky Luciano brain you know masterminded right. when he was over, when he was exiled in Sicily. It's like that's another great idea. It's like, well, you know, we've got this gangster. We got we got to we got to get him over. Well, Lucky's now in Sicily, and now he's got all his international connections, and he, and he creates the French connections. Right. So, you know, well, maybe they should let him stay in America. That's right. You know, you know unintended consequences right. of social action. Right. Sure. So yeah, no, Nicky's he's he's uh, he's taking this uh, what he's learning from Joey, and I, I think Joey's very much. Uh, trying to manipulate Nikki because Joey's thinking, well, look, if I can get this guy to control the distribution of heroin sure. in New York City, he could team up with the Gallows. Uh, you know, he could team up with, with our gang, and, and, really, and we could rule the streets, right, the king was, of the streets, right, from the bottom up. Right, a, a cross-racial criminal coalition, right, right. which is fairly amazing. <laughs> yes, it's absolutely very much amazing. in keeping of the sick, you know, of the late '60s. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. The, the, going to Barnes, though, Barnes. Rats out his sure. his colleagues yeah. because they're s screwing him both, well, literally <laughs> and figuratively. Yes. Uh, and you don't, he's, you he's don't a, mess with the gangsters' uh, women, right? You know, and 
now he goes into the witness protection program sure. and he's he's sort of given up the life yeah. he's seen the light what's yeah. the light well there's uh you know I, I think that when these criminals are you know they're at the top of their game there, there, there really is no future you know it's either going to be death okay. or absolute obscurity okay so you know, we've got you're, you're not building well we don't have there. but we don't have absolute obscurity we've got a guy who wrote a book with you that was noticed so he's he's interested. He's not driving Maseratis anymore. No, that's like, true. You know, that's true. Deans. And he's taking doggy bags home. So there is 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 there is there a morality tale in either one of these two or in combo? I mean, can we draw some positive lessons out of it, as my seventh grade teacher might say? Well, it, yeah, I, I think crime doesn't pay. No. It's, it's just that same, you know, that that same. You yeah, know, but but but, the, but we can't the, live the without the demon. Want to tell you, you know, it's. Yeah, but we can't live without the criminals. There's this fascination, no? Yes. The I mean, bad you can't boys, deny it. Yeah. They, they do I mean, stuff. It's just, what is it? What is it about you and me that's attracted in some way to this? Just a bad boy breaking of the boundaries? Well, there is. I mean, there there's almost an attractiveness in just that absolute recklessness. I mean, at least taking reading about it vicariously, it right. certainly makes for an exciting read. I mean, these guys are definitely living for the moment. They have right. no future. Right. Uh, and you know, completely devoid of, of morality themselves, and you know, they they think of the city as their playground. Tom Folsom's future, what, what's next? What are you thinking about generally? I know your authors don't want to ah, think. Yeah. I mean, are we in the same genre? Sure, there's, there's a lot of, uh, you know, I, it was, as we were talking about earlier, uh, you know, it, Paris in the 20s, it was a great time for artists. You know, New York in the 60s and 70s, it's okay. a great time so for we, criminals. We, we, ah, we know criminals, <laughs> 60s and 70s, we'll work on it. Tom, it was an absolute pleasure. Thank what you for the treat. opportunity reading this and for the conversation. Absolutely. Thank you. You got it. Hello, I'm Doug Musio. Let us know what you think about this show. You can reach us at cuny.tv. When you get there, click on the bar that says contact us and send your email. Whatever it is, thanks, no thanks, obnoxious, do it. Send it.